Welcome to the What Works Clearinghouse, or WWC, Single Case Design, or SCD, Standards Training, focused on introducing the logic of single case designs. On the slides, some words are underlined and in bold. Definitions for these terms are in the glossary, which is available on the WWC website, whatworks.ed.gov. This module broadly describes the single case design, describes some common single case design variations that the WWC reviews, and finally, it will cover how to assess whether a study is eligible for review as a single case design. After completing this module, you will be familiar with some common single case design variations and be able to identify whether a study is eligible for WWC review as a single case design. Single case designs, also sometimes called single case experimental designs or single subject designs, are experimental designs that have the goal of assessing whether there is a causal relationship between some intervention and an outcome. These designs are a form of interrupted time series designs and can provide rigorous experimental evaluations of intervention effects. Single case designs are typically characterized by individual cases as the unit of intervention application and data analysis. Cases are observed repeatedly across time in a series, with observations generally broken into phases, typically one or more baseline phases prior to or in the absence of treatment, followed by one or more treatment phases. The simplest version of the design is presented here, which is an example of an A-B design. The baseline phase corresponds to the A phase, and the intervention phase is the B phase. This design has weak internal validity, because events other than the intervention, such as those related to maturation or history, could be the true cause of the intervention effect. A student may have reached a developmental milestone at the same time as the onset of the intervention, or there may have been some change in the classroom that could have had an impact on the outcome. Researchers use elaborations on this basic A-B design, which allows for the replication of intervention efforts across time, across cases, or both. Single case designs are common in educational and psychological research, particularly in contexts where the interventions have to be carefully tailored to the particular needs of the target population or the population of interest is low prevalence, making it difficult to obtain enough participants for a between-group design. Single case designs can also be useful in contexts where a true control condition in a between-group design may be difficult or unethical to implement. Single case designs can be especially useful to evaluate intervention effects relative to a no intervention baseline phase or to compare the relative effectiveness of two or more interventions intended to have an impact in similar populations or contexts. As of the version 4.1 Standards and Procedures Handbooks, the WWC recognizes four single case designs as eligible for review. These designs are the treatment reversal or treatment withdrawal design, the changing criterion design, the multiple baseline or multiple probe design, and the alternating treatment design. These designs allow for effect replication at multiple points in time. As we will discuss later in this module, the current understanding among applied single case design researchers is that a study shows intervention effectiveness when the design can document at least three separate demonstrations of an experimental effect at three different points in time, either within a single case or across different cases. The treatment reversal or withdrawal design is characterized by alternating phases without and with the intervention of interest. This design is also sometimes called an ABK design where K represents the number of phase pairs. On the right, we present a typical treatment reversal design, which is an example of an ABAB design. It begins with the baseline phase, the first A phase, followed by a treatment phase, or the first B phase. The transition between the first baseline phase and the first treatment phase represents the first opportunity to demonstrate an intervention effect. The first intervention phase is next, followed by a phase where the intervention is withdrawn, which is another baseline phase. This is sometimes called the return to baseline phase and also may be referred to as the second A phase. The transition between the first treatment phase and the return to baseline phase represents the second opportunity to demonstrate an intervention effect. 
Finally, there is another treatment phase, which can be referred to as the second B phase. The transition between the return to baseline phase and the second intervention phase is the third and final opportunity to demonstrate an intervention effect. By observing three similar changes as a consequence of the presence or absence of treatment, researchers can have greater certainty that the change is in response to treatment, as opposed to a consequence of history or maturation. Because this design involves the repeated application and then withdrawal of treatment, the design is only appropriate when the intervention effect can reverse or decay after it is withdrawn. This is sometimes referred to as an outcome or intervention being reversible. We want to make two quick notes before moving on to the next single case design type that is eligible for WWC review. First, not all treatment reversal designs will begin with the baseline. For instance, in order to allow for comparisons within and across cases, studies with multiple cases being studied under treatment reversal designs may alternate phase ordering so that half the cases are undergoing the intervention while the other half are in a baseline or return to baseline phase. The second note to highlight is that this design allows for as many phases as the researcher desires. A four-phase treatment reversal design, as shown here, is simply the smallest number of phases which allow for three opportunities to demonstrate an intervention effect. Many treatment reversal designs in the literature may therefore use more than the four phases shown in this simple example. The next single case design eligible for review by the WWC is the changing criterion design. This design is characterized by multiple intervention phases for an intervention intended to change the outcome in a stepwise fashion. Successive intervention phases are applied after the outcome reaches some pre-specified criterion value or criterion range. Such pre-specified criteria might, for instance, be that the percentage of time on task exceeds 20% for five sessions, then exceeds 50%, and finally exceeds 60%. Some designs will also include embedded reversals to baseline in addition to the steadily incrementing criterion. As with the treatment reversal design shown previously, there are three opportunities to demonstrate an intervention effect in the example changing criterion design shown here. Once between the initial baseline and the first intervention phase, next followed by the transition between the first intervention phase and the second intervention phase, and then finally between the second and third intervention phase. The next design eligible for review by the WWC is the multiple baseline design. Multiple baseline designs are characterized by multiple cases entering the baseline at similar times and then the intervention is introduced at times that are staggered across cases. This design allows for three intervention effects to be observed at the introduction of the intervention for each case, and also allows for comparison across the baseline phases as evidence that the other cases have not changed in a way that indicates that the change in the outcome was due to some effect of history or maturation. The same effect of history or maturation is unlikely to have occurred at three different times for three different cases. In the multiple baseline design, cases can be multiple participants with the same behavior in similar contexts. An example of this multiple baseline across participants design is shown in the plot on the right, which presents data from three different participants. The multiple baseline design can also be used to examine the intervention effect in different contexts for the same behaviors or different behaviors for the same unit. An example of such a multiple baseline design across contexts is shown in the new plot on the right, where the same outcome is being observed in three different contexts. The multiple probe design is a variation of the multiple baseline design. It is differentiated from the multiple baseline design by intermittent rather than continuous data collection probes. It is important to note that the intermittent data collection in a multiple probe is a planned feature of the design. Missing data sometimes happens in any single case design due to classroom absences or other uncontrollable factors. However, the presence of a few points of missing data does not make a multiple baseline design a multiple probe design. Rather, multiple probe designs are commonly used when continuous testing of a behavior or skill 
which has not yet been learned, could be considered harmful or costly for the participant. So the researchers intentionally plan to collect baseline data at the minimum amount necessary to establish an ongoing pattern of behavior. The final single case design eligible for review by the WWC is the alternating treatment design. This design is characterized by switching rapidly between two or more treatment conditions. These designs have quick phases of only a few observations. The reason for the rapid alternation is that there is some concern that repeated testing might lead to carryover between conditions. In these designs, effect replication occurs at each transition between treatments. There are a handful of ways this design might appear different from other single case designs. Unlike other designs, alternating treatment designs do not always have a baseline or business as usual phase. Additionally, the sequential observations from an individual treatment are connected to each other rather than the first observation being connected to the second observation, the third observation being connected to the fourth, and so on. The reason for this is that the traditional form of analysis for single case designs is a visual analysis, where researchers visually compare the two or more treatments. Connecting the observations in the manner shown on this plot facilitates the comparison of the two treatments. Finally, it is important to note that the term phases is not often used in the single case design literature in connection to the alternating treatment design. For the purposes of a WWC review, we want to think of phases as each set of successive data points for the same treatment without interruption of another treatment as a phase. This will be important when we discuss applying the design standards later in this training. Now that you are familiar with the four single case designs that the WWC currently has standards for reviewing, it is time to discuss the WWC's eligibility requirements for single case designs. In order to be eligible for WWC review as a single case design, the study must meet three requirements. The first requirement is that the individual case is the unit of intervention administration and data analysis. Usually, a case is an individual participant, but sometimes a case may be a cluster of participants, such as a classroom or school. The second requirement is that within the design, the case can provide its own control for the purposes of comparison. For example, the case's series of outcomes prior to the intervention is compared with the series of outcomes during and after receiving the intervention. The third requirement is that the outcome variable is measured repeatedly within and across different conditions or levels of the independent variable. If necessary, take a moment to review these requirements alongside the earlier portion of the training to ensure that you understand the eligibility requirements for single case designs. The remainder of this training will check your understanding of the single case design eligibility requirements. Time for your first knowledge check in this module. A study assesses the effect of a behavioral intervention on six students. The interventionist begins to collect repeated measurement data after the onset of the intervention to assess whether problem behaviors of each individual student reach a target level. The interventionist determines that the intervention is a success for an individual student after they display low levels of problem behaviors for three consecutive observation sessions. Your choices are A. This study is eligible for WWC review as a single case design. B, the study is not eligible for WWC review under the single case design standards. You may want to pause the video now to think about your answer. The answer is B. Although the individual participants in this design were the unit of intervention administration and analysis, the researcher only collected data after the intervention had been applied. Because of this, each unit cannot serve as their own control because the outcome variable was not measured repeatedly across both conditions or levels of the independent variable, namely across the baseline and intervention conditions. Therefore, the study would not be eligible for review under the WWC single case design standards. A study uses an ABAB treatment reversal design to assess the effects of the good behavior game intervention for preventing disruptive behavior among second grade students. The interventionist collects repeated measurement data on disruptive behavior for six students, with data collected for each student during two baseline phases and two intervention phases. 
The study authors use individual participants as the unit for all data analyses. Your choices are A. This study is eligible for WWC review as a single case design. B. This study is not eligible for WWC review under the SCD standards. You may want to pause the video now to think about your answer. The answer is A. In this study, each case was the unit of intervention administration and data analysis. Each of the six students can serve as their own control for the purposes of comparison, and the outcome variable is measured repeatedly before and after the onset of intervention. Therefore, the study is eligible for WWC review as a single case design. This concludes our module on single case designs. Let's review what we discussed in this module. We described the single case design. We discussed common single case design variations used in the educational research literature. And finally, we described the criteria used to assess whether a study is eligible for what works clearinghouse review as a single case design. The next module in the training series will focus on determining study ratings for studies being reviewed under the WWC single case design standards.